Hi everyone and welcome back to another Red Dead Online video. So continuing on from the last video, I'm going to show you how much gold and money that you have farmed without a roll, without even going through the story missions, and with less than 10 hours on your gameplay. So the scene that you're looking at right now is my fourth completion of the Blood Money Opportunity Embers of the East, which at the release of this video is currently still on two times rewards. That means you get two times the gold, two times the money and two times the XP. So if you refer to the previous video, you will see how easy this is and how you can actually farm this at the beginning of your Red Dead Online journey. So at two times rewards each time you do this and stay in the mission for about 30 minutes, you will get 0.96 gold, about 2000 XP and about 250 in cash. So doing this four times will give you about $1000 plus some gold to begin with. And if you've added two-factor authentication to your login, Rockstar will gift you that 10 gold bars. And with this, you are almost at 15. Now, the only reason why I'm doing this guide is because I've been reading up on a lot of forums as well as Reddit and even on some Discord channels that people have been having a lot of difficulty trying to get cash and gold and not being able to start their first roll. Now, with regards to getting gold, these are the kind of missions that will grant you gold in any circumstance. This does not include any form of gold that is awarded to you by Rockstar via any kind of bonuses. And over here, you can see that Bounty Hunting is the only role that will give you rewards with gold. However, that does not mean that you need to be a bounty hunter in order to earn gold. And I'm going to show you why. So with all the different methods of earning gold, the only determining factor as to how much gold you earn is the amount of time you spend in the mission. So it doesn't matter if you are in a mission or you are pursuing a free roam bounty. The gold awarded only tallies with the amount of time that you spend on that mission or on that bounty. So with this fact, the bounty hunting role as the very first role that you should buy, I'm just going to say that it is not necessary. What I would do is to take up the trader role first with my very first 15 gold so that I can actually earn money and gold at the same time instead of spending my first 15 gold on a bounty hunter role which doesn't give me a lot of money for bounties. So in terms of efficiency, if you want to earn both gold and money faster, you should be taking trader as your first role and using all the other missions to earn you gold. And when Rockstar gives you two times bonuses on certain missions, like what we have on Blood Money Crimes and Opportunities this month in March, then whatever you earn, it will be two times the amount. So the reason for getting all that money is just so you can actually get decent starting equipment. First, let's talk about essential weapons. Go to any gun shop located on the map. So it's indicated by an icon of a revolver. And once you're there, go ahead and approach the gunsmith and start browsing on the weapons to buy. Now my first recommendation would be replacing your carbine repeater with the Lancaster repeater as that would be one of the best ones in the game that you can get. But I do not recommend getting upgrades at this point in time so that you can spend your money on other weapons as well. The only other thing that you should do to your repeater and any other weapon is to get the basic wraps that are available so that your weapon doesn't get dirty so quickly and you don't have to clean it so often with gun oil that actually costs you 150 and that will save you up some money in the meantime. The next few weapons that you should buy would be the varmint rifle for small game hunting, the bolt action rifle for big game hunting, and finally a basic bow, which you can use for both hunting as well as killing NPCs. These weapons will ensure that you will be able to handle most situations that come your way in the next one or two weeks of gameplay. Once you've bought those weapons, remember to fill up on ammunition as well. You just have to make sure that you buy the full amount here and it will last you for some time. You can also access the catalog to buy ammunition and other things and you can do that wherever you are and the items will be delivered either to the post office, your lockbox and in the case of weapons, to your horse. Now with some of that money left, let's go to the stables and buy a horse. Now there's a lot of commentary online that uh, you don't have to buy a horse right now, that your starter horse can last you for quite some time. But the whole point of getting all this money early is to facilitate you for an easier time in the game. Of course, you won't be able to get the level 20 roll horses 
nor will you be able to get the most expensive ones, but there's one horse right now, which is not that expensive, but will last you for quite some time. Your starter horse has 3 speed and 2 acceleration, and the one that I'm recommending you to buy will have 6 speed and 4 acceleration. In addition to that, it will have a lot more stamina, and that would allow your horse to go at full speed a longer amount of time, not to mention that it will be slightly faster as well. So when you go into the stables, you will see that there are a lot of choices. Some are too expensive for you, and some are locked behind the rolls. So the horse that you're looking for is under the superior category, and it is the Red Chestnut Arabian. So again, this horse will last you for quite some time, before you are able to buy some of the other better horses. For the time being, just put any saddle on it, as it doesn't really matter right now. The best saddle and stirrup combination for this will set you back by another $600 or $700, and you can buy that later when you reach rank 35 for the saddle and 44 for the stirrups. That would be the Nagadochi saddle together with the hooded stirrups. And together they will add plus 3 speed and plus 3 acceleration to your horse. For those of you who are still new to this, whenever you get a new horse, you will have to get your bonding level with the horse to level 4. This will ensure that your horse will be at its maximum stamina and maximum health. I would not recommend spending any money on the saddlebags or on any of the enhancements. Just make sure that you buy some food for your horse. And the cheapest and most efficient will be hay at 25 cents each. And I recommend that you buy the maximum amount. So you have spent more than $1,000 in shops. And the game gives you the trade award plus 0.4 gold. This is just but one of the achievements that will give you gold. And there are a lot of these that you will get in the future which you can reset up to 10 times. So I'm going to reset this now, and the next time I spend another $1,000, I will be able to get the gold reward again. Hello. The next thing you want to do is to increase your horse bonding level to level 4. Feeding your horse, brushing your horse, and even petting your horse will increase that, but the fastest way is to lead your horse. So it takes about between 30 to 48 minutes to get to level 4 bonding, and this is the fastest way available. I'm just going to set a waypoint somewhere far away and start leading my horse until it gets to level 4. Halfway towards my waypoint, I had gotten level 3. And when I got to level 4, I was almost at my waypoint. So once you're at level 4, your horse would have achieved its maximum stamina as well as maximum health, and its speed and acceleration will have also increased. And that's it for the guide today. I would say that the next thing that you want to do is to actually go through the story missions, because that would give you gold and cash as well. Now with your weapons and your horse, you'll have an easier time tackling the story missions, and hopefully you'll be able to speed through those very very quickly. If you found this guide useful, do drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, do drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.